my name is Hajo Meyer, and I live in the Netherlands, but I was born <coughs> in 1924 in Germany of Jewish German parents or German Jewish parents. They were first German and then Jewish. And uh, <coughs> I um, was nine when Hitler came to power, and the Jews started to be harassed, discriminated against, and, and limited in their in their potential. Uh, I was nine years old then, and <coughs> I was um, I attended a, a German a German high school uh, until the. Uh, November 1938 program, and um, I cannot say that I was greatly harassed there. Uh, globally, I could just, uh, it was absolutely bearable, and I learned a lot there. It was a good school. And I learned a lot about the doctrines of a fascist state whether democratic or under dictatorship. And um, I was then already sensitized and alerted to dictatorship uh, type of, an aggress of, of aggressiveness. I, maybe if you want, I can come back to that. <coughs> but then, after, uh, after the November pogrom, Jewish kids were no longer allowed in German schools. And in the region where I lived, or anywhere in Germany, there was no Jewish school anymore available to take me because they were a fool. And so, and that is a big for 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 uh, a, a eager and not completely stupid Jewish boy. This is the most terrible thing which can happen to you. You have no future. You you think? I mean, I I want to be somebody, and that was instilled into me. You must see to it that you do something in your life with it, which is worth doing and that you contribute to society, that you be a good person. But if you haven't learned anything, hardly any of those goals can be achieved. So <coughs> I was sent as a refugee kid to, to Holland alone because my parents, my father was a, a First World War veteran and uh, reasonably highly decora decorated and, and wounded in the First World War and he thought his health was not sufficient. He was a, a lawyer, and he was due to that, he was allowed to, to go on with his being a lawyer, or at least with a, with a, with a, a sort of lawyer. He could go to still go to the courts to defend Jews, but not under the title of a lawyer, whatever. <coughs> so he was humiliated, all right. And... Uh, <coughs> Then I came to Holland, and uh, eventually I, I managed to get myself an education in spite of all adversities, and um, then went underground in '43, but was caught in '44. Went to Auschwitz, survived that, studied theoretical physics, uh, and 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 went to to Philips Electronics, and eventually the last ten years I spent there as the director of research of that huge huge central laboratory of nearly 3,000 people as the, uh, one of the three directors, and I was in charge of physics there. So that's it. And then <coughs> I was pensioned and uh, became a violin maker for nearly 20 years, full-time, and a violin and viola maker, and now I'm a s journalist and a writer. Okay, that's it. Now, let me just ask you this question. How long were you in Auschwitz, and when did you get out? I, <coughs> I, I think uh, I was about 10 months in Auschwitz, and I was liberated in January, 30, end of January 33 by the Russians, because I was very, very weak, uh, which you can say, oh, that is very bad. Well, it, it was also good, because if you are very weak, bodily, you, um, your mind is a bit closed, and, and, and the impressions I got did not really penetrate. So I, I, I think I, I never have any nightmares about Auschwitz or so, whatever, because probably it didn't. And, and besides that, I was already very early trained 
in closing my emotions off, uh, because the, the, the trauma of being a refugee kid at 14 is also quite a big thing, and uh, so uh, I don't know. So you started this organization, uh, Jewish Voice or something? Yeah, in, an, another Jewish Voice. No, I didn't start it. I was one of the very early ones, but it was started by <coughs> two people in Holland, and uh, I came home from a holiday and, and, and heard about it, and I immediately, I mean, within an hour being home, I phoned them, I said, oh, that is something I want to do, because <coughs> the lesson I took from my stay in Auschwitz was a Jew, a, 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 anybody belonging to the Jewish people, which I do, I don't belong to the Jewish creed because I'm absolutely a, an agnost, I don't do anything, anything, not, not the slightest thing which has to do with the Jewish creed, but I cannot deny and, and, and that, that I, I belong to the Jewish people. My, my four Jewish grand, grandparents. So uh, I said, anybody belonging to the Jewish people is not allowed to be, be behave ever like our perpetrator, our, our, the people who did the thing to us. And that's, that's why I was immediately very eager to join this club, club, and, and, and so there, there it is. Uh, what is their m mission statement, or in other words, what is their purpose statement, uh, well, effectively? The, look, um, <laughs> my interpretation of, the, of our, our, our statement is the following. The, any criticism on the policies of Israel is hampered and made impossible by a terrible trick and, and crime of Israeli propaganda that any criticism on the politics of Israel comes out is induced by anti-Semitic feelings. And our main purpose is to show to the world that we are Jews and we are conscious Jews, we in a way we are, of our, uh, uh, we are proud of our Jewish heritage, not of our Jewish presence, but of our Jewish heritage. And we want to show that you must criticize Israel if you at all want anything good for the Jews in the world, because what Israel is doing is destroying the Jewish world and the Jewish heritage. Now, how do you... Why do you say that what the Jews are doing now is destroying? I mean, expand on that. Let me just say, it, it's obvious to us sitting here, but it's not obvious yet to the audience. So I need you to really connect the dots between why you're saying what you just said and fill, mm -hmm. fill in some okay, blanks. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I think why I have a certain right to be proud of being of Jewish origin is because the Jews were the pioneers of interhuman ethics. And the Jewish idea of how to treat a foreigner, how to treat a, a servant, which is in the Old Testament, was taken up by nobody less than Jesus Christ, who was the last of the great Jewish prophets. The prophets in the whole tradition wanted to stress and to, uh, to stress the ethical content of Judaism, which is there, the interhuman ethical content of Judaism. And, uh, they, and, and this is exactly what Jesus Christ tried to do. And so via Jesus, on the one hand, and via Mohammed, on the other, a hell of a lot of most, the most important things of interhuman ethics went into the great, the three great monotheistic uh, 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 creeds. And so there is reason enough to be proud. And what is happening now in Israel towards the, Isra the, the Palestinians is exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite. 
They, they treat them like, like vermin. They, they, they talk about them in terms, I mean, like, for instance, the, the, the chief of staff uh, of the Israeli army recently, the, the, the Palestinians are a, a cancerous growth. You can apply surgery to get rid of them. I mean, that type of talking is exactly the opposite and is actually, is actually like Nazi talking. That's what was said about me when I was a boy, a Jewish boy in Germany under the Nazis. And so your work then is to do what with this group? Well, to, to, to publicize, for instance, a statement like this by Ayolon and, to, and, and, and I, today we spent with a, with a friend we know via via who is, who is trying to help the farmers who are dispropriated by the building of the wall and, and we want to publicize this and, 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 and make, make a noise in the world. You, you know, when, when, when the Nazis guessed the Jews, the world was silent. Now, the world is silent while the Jews or the Israeli uh, harass, dis, uh, 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 humiliate, disprop, uh, and, 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 and steal away land from the Palestinians. And the world is silent. And I want to awake the world. Because there is a very nice poem by, a, by an Israeli poet who lives in Holland which says, also the hand of those, the hands of those who see it all but stay and uh, don't move as if they were paralyzed, color red. You made a comment earlier that um, you can kill people by other than gas. Yes. Expand on that comment and what you were getting at yes. there. Well, you can... First of all, the, one of the most important things for any conscious human being is to develop her or his own potential. And you can never develop your potential if you are deprived of, of access to education. And, and that is exactly what happened to me when... Oh, Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> why do I say that you can kill people without gas chambers? That is because a human being is only a full human being if she or he can develop its, his or her, her or his full potential. Then she can, can, can do all all she can to 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 help mankind to and to be happy with, with with herself and whatever if you then if you therefore if you deny young people who have potential if you deny them access to to education you rob their future and if you have no future you have no life and if you have not developed the yourself to the full, you are at, at, at least handicapped, if not, if not, although you st may still walk around, you are dead. And I, I, isn't that also a story of, of Jesus and the talents? So, I mean, this is a very, very, and I know it for myself, because I tell you, I, I have the letters I wrote as a refugee kid to my parents who still were in Germany. And they are full of, oh gosh, what will happen to me? I have no education. And eventually I got it. By, by they helped and, and I did a lot and, and whatever and I was lucky. And I got it and I, 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 I did my PhD and, and what have you. And I was successful. So I, I have no complaints about that. But I had to fight. And that, what, that, you can see that from my letters. That was a terrible experience. What will be of me? What will I be? It's just a shit who can't do anything because he has, hasn't learned anything. And, and where, where I probably I felt I had some potential. So there it is. Yeah. 
the only way to 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 do something about it is to uh, to to dry the swamp which is the feeding ground for the terrorists and i was we, i i i had just lunch with our our palestinian friend and i say this since many many years that this is but i asked him what do you think because it's my firm conviction what keeps these uh, suicide bombers active is the hopelessness and i asked my my friend my palestinian friend jamal what do you think he said no no hope so I, i i feel it from my own experience having survived in auschwitz i only could survive auschwitz because i came in there in march 44 when 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 the americans and the and, and the allied were very near the invasion and so that gave me hope and kept me alive if there is no hope you better be dead but you take some of your enemies with you so uh uh where where do we go from here in other words you want to make an awareness of all this to people so that's really because uh, i feel the same way in, Amer- in my i think america my audience is sort of americans because i'm americans and i can talk american to americans mm. you know and there's a, a a guy who wrote a book uh, uh disruptive grace and he made a statement ignorance is the plea of an accomplice mm mm-hmm. and and i think that that's what's happening in american law cases uh but then there's there's the policy makers and the government of america who's always been so very very protective of of israel and and even the way that they act how do you respond to that they will pay the price as being co-responsible or m- maybe nearly the main resp- they will bear the main responsibility for crimes against humanity which may occur here which occur here every day every day access to hospitals access to education is is denied access to economic to economic future i mean the ex- existential threat if you have no money and you have a family to feed it is incredible that is a humiliation and a and an existential fear where you where you also kill people with the bush people and 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 the and the and the right wing palestinian friends jewish friends of bush like abrams and 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 how they called and 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 perle and and wolfowitz they will be judged i hope at a moment at a certain moment in in history some t- t- 20 years from now they will be brought to brussels as war criminals that is criminal behavior what they do i mean to it is as criminal as at the at the time at the time uh, when the jews were killed i mean they were even more radically killed but that is no excuse it's, it's no excuse and and uh, they were even more radically killed and they were silent silent too they didn't do anything but again the same happens and now it's done by Jews towards the Palestinians and i think it is is it is a <clears throat> very 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 high responsibility and they will be co-guilty yes so now with so much power you know now the united states being you know the only superpower and seems to have all this uh, neo conservatives they call them neo cons mm. and they're sort of in power and they're going to kind of control the world mm. it seems it seems kind of silly to think that they'll ever come to accountability with with so much power and so much unilateralism uh you are right but there is besides the world of power there's the world of mind and history will 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 give the judgment and you know we had ivan the terrible in russia and uh, uh, we, we had several other and maybe maybe uh, 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 george we, we later later generations will talk about george w as the terrible what do i know so since 67 what happened in this area is fake I mean I I also thought when we in 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 the early 90s that Oslo would be something and it took us a hell of or most of us a hell of a lot of time to discover it was fake I mean how can you talk about peace and in the meantime 
build one settlement next to the other, and if you see that, you, 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 it's mind-boggling what they did. And it's mind-boggling what the Israelis did for fake, and it's mind-boggling what the Palestinian Authority did for fake. They both are criminals, both. Both of them. It's not the only the Israelis, although the Israelis, the point is this, that, that, that I want to, to stress still. When we criticize, and especially when I criticize what Israel does, ah, yes, yes, but you are too one-sided. And I always say this, in a, in a situation which is so essentially asymmetric, where there is one big power and the others are, are underdogs in any way, you cannot be even-handed in your criticism because a, a, a such an unequilibrated situation can only be uh, uh, criticized and, and, and uh, commented about in a, in a non-equilibrated way. The only it is it is state terrorism versus anarchic terrorism. State terrorism you can manage because the state has the means. The anarchy, which has no infrastructure and, and where, where the, the, the terror comes from dissident groups, you cannot manage. What do you think the hope is for making any of these changes as far as uh, what you're trying to do? I mean, if you make people aware, what are people being... So, so my point is, if I become aware, whether in Holland or in America, okay, I'm aware, I think this is a terrible thing. But the question is, well, what do I do to move the rock? I mean, you know, what are practical things? Because yes. you walk around being aware and then you just go to Disneyland. Well, look, our organization has contacts with foreign affairs in Holland, but Holland is a tiny country and, and has no power whatsoever. But we hope that by continuously trying to influence European policy, that the Europeans will exert some pressure. I, I mean, it's a tiny hope, I agree. But uh, well, uh, look, if you don't do anything, you are also co-responsible, because that is one important and uh, 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 nice paradox. Israel and, and, and the friends of Israel always say, yes, we know it's not all according to the right laws of humanity, but don't forget Israel is the only, uh, is the only uh, a democracy in a region where there is no democracy at all. And what they do towards the Palestinians is still less than what Hussein did with his own people. Okay. What these people, they are in, in, in some ways they are right. But this being right makes it worse for them. Because the more the degree of responsibility, the more the individual citizen is co-responsible for what, what his or her government does. I lived under Hitler's Nazi regime in Germany, and which was comparable to Stalin's in Russia. And you could only do, so, you, you could do nothing. When, when you opened your mouth, you were in a concentration camp, and when you said something, you were already dead. There were very few, like Geschichte Scholl, the, the famous Munich students who tried to do something in those people of, of the 20th of July, and you had the Sakharovs in, in, in Russia and, and similar people. But not you cannot expect of, of any majority being heroes. You need to be a hero, because in order to... to bring into jeopardy your own family, that requires a hell of a lot. So you can expect. So therefore, at the moment, the Israelis and the Americans and anybody any elsewhere in the democratic world are co-responsible for what happens here towards the, the Palestinians. <laughs>